Hello again, everybody. It's the Reverend Jay Goldstein, and welcome to another episode of Doodling with Reverend Jay. Today's episode, we're going to be drawing a rocket ship. Now, rocket ships are fun, they're fast, and they might be the future of humanity. So let's draw one. Today I'm going to be drawing a classic Buck Rogers Flash Gordon style rocket ship. Now they were cigar shaped. So let's draw a cigar shape first. We're going to put the nose of the rocket ship here and draw a large curved line most of the way across the page. Next what we're going to want to do is create a mirror or complementary line to complete the cigar shape. That's good enough. Next you're going to want to connect these two points with a semicircle. I'll show you why later. To keep this spaceship stable, you're going to want to give it little rudders. That can be easily done by making a diagonal line and then a line that follows the way the spaceship is going. Do that on both sides. And then bring these rudders back in with curved lines. Now I'm doing this while I'm talking behind the camera so it's not coming out as well as it ordinarily would. But you're getting the general idea I hope. Next, let's place a little window up here in the nose cone so we know where the astronauts are and so that they can look out into space. I like to make the windows on a spaceship square, just like in an airplane. Next, we can kind of color in the nose cone a little bit. And put some little hash mark details right here on the rudders. I think that looks rather smart. Now we can decorate this any way you want. You could draw a bird of prey, or, I don't know, whatever symbol represents your country. For my country, it's a bird of prey. But because I can't really draw one that easily, I'm going to make it's a USA. And a lot of rocket ship toys will have that kind of a marking. All that's left is the fire coming out of the rocket, or the exhaust. An easy way to do that is to make a large curved line from the top of the rocket that gets a little bit wider than the rocket, but that comes back and makes a point like that. Or swoops up a little like that. It will make a point because we're going to build off of that and finish a flame shape. Now some lines in the flame will give it some depth. As well as giving the appearance that the end is very bright. And there we are. It's not the best spaceship, but it is our spaceship. And that's all that's important. I hope you enjoyed drawing today, and if you did, please post a copy of what you've drawn. Send me a message or put a link down in the comments. Can you still do that on YouTube? Well, I guess we'll find out. 
If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, the share button, subscribe, and come back because next time we'll be drawing something else. It's Reverend Jay Goldstein. Ta-da! Alright, so I have a few students that like to ink drawings and um, I want to basically go through the process. So what I did, I downloaded this very low-res image and it's uh, these little thumbnail sketches and what I'm doing is just basically showing you how to use the the features here in Inks Inkscape. So I'll uh, delete a couple lines here. Some of the ones that are pretty hard to do, you know, like these, maybe. That's how confident I feel. I just put those right back. Now, I would highly suggest, you know, like if you're if you're trying to learn this program, you know, go download some really old drawing or something really pixelated to practice on. Yeah, you, you won't have any buy-in that way. You'll get used to it, and then when you're doing it on your own drawing, it doesn't feel so bad, you know what I mean? Like Because you got a little bit of knowledge behind you as far as the tools are concerned. There's two um, things here. we got a freehand tool and a draw bizarre tool. I'll show you the features of each over here. So this one right here is pretty nice that you could draw a line, and it straightens it out because there's a smoothing feature. So you can see if I turn smoothing down, it gets all woggly, and if you go like this, it turns it up and it becomes nice and smooth. Now the nice thing about this one is when you go into edit the points, let's say you want it thicker, you can go like that. If you want to taper it somewhere else, you can go like this, or taper it at the other end, you could do that. So that's a really cool feature in the fact that, you know, um, you can make it thicker than right after the fact if you need it to or if you need to blend the vectors together. Another nice feature is you can edit this anywhere on the curve. You don't have to worry about touching the handles unlike, unlike Illustrator. Illustrator you have to click on the handles to manipulate it or the nodes. Here in Inkscape you can just click anywhere like that. And if you don't need a node you can just delete it out. Uh, maybe I don't like those nodes. So I can go like that, make it thicker. So that is a very nice feature. All right, the other one. So this one uh, I use for the major outline. I'll hit enter. And again, you can take the nodes, but you can edit it anywhere on the line or you can edit the handles and you can let's say smooth out a handle just by going like that and again you can delete those handles out if you need to make this one thicker you can go over here and because I have a nice little feature on called uh, use last style which is under, uh, here's a fast way to get to it, double click on this and you can say under the pen tool use last style okay now let's put some of these lines back in now I'm not sure what the style was on this line but I want to keep it so 2.4 so I'll go like this And I'll look for these major pivot points. Um, I could consider that a pivot point right there. Go like that. And I'm not really trying too hard here. I'm just basically putting some in. If I can, if I want to get rid of them, I can. So that was 2.4. I'll just change that to 2.4. And I'll just type that in. All right, so let's manipulate that. Let's go like this. I feel this one needs to be softened up a little bit, so I'll go like that. 
and I might not even need it. So let's get rid of it. That looks a lot better. Now the blending between the ear and here. So if I go in, zoom in, I could take this one, push it this way a little bit. Take this one, push it in a little bit. Take this one, pull it up a little bit. But look how fast you could do that editing. If one does not blend, I can just simply go like this and move these handles until they blend. Okay, let's look at that eye. And I see that lips can change a little bit here. Just like that. So for the eye, I might use this one just to establish the eye shape. R something real rough like this. And that way I can have manipulation afterwards. I don't want a whole lot of these nodes. Now for this one, I always use kind of like the, this type of round out joint and the butt cap, I call it. Without it, it kind of looks like this. You can see that it's very squared off compared to that one. And then if I wanted to make the eyelashes, I can use spacebar here to click and left mouse button you kind of manipulate around. On a Mac, it's going to be left mouse button. On a PC, it just can be spacebar held down. See that line right there? I don't like that. So I might take this one and round it out. Okay, that looks a lot better to me. All right, let's get some of these lines in here. Again, I'm not paying too much attention to these. I'm just drawing some in. And then after the fact, I'll kind of clean them up a little bit. And it could be many factors of moving different ones around until I'm happy with it. Again, I, I would say um, if, if you're ever in doubt about this program, you should try Illustrator and trying to ink. And uh, tell me how you like these little handles because <laughs> uh, they don't have them. In fact, I can kind of show you that. Here's Illustrator. Here's my path, and here's my direct path tool. And you can see I can't manipulate this in any way, fit, shape, or form right here. There's a bending tool, but it's very inaccurate. And as far as like the ends are concerned, um, I could get a tapered look, but you would never be able to manipulate the end taper. All right, so that should give you an idea on how to do it. I mean, it's just a repeat of it over and over again that makes up the drawing. But um, I hope you enjoyed.